Hey guys, so I am so excited to share with you guys this video. It is my go-to look lately using a lot of different products actually, a lot of different techniques. This is the way that I like to do my makeup. You get a very beautiful highlighted effect. I'm using a BB cream. My skin looks very natural, not makeup-y at all. I feel like there's really nothing on my skin. I really didn't use a setting powder um, everywhere. Like, it's just good. I got all the same effects that you would get like if you did, you know, more intense techniques. But I did it in, I think, an everyday easy way. But you're not wearing so much makeup and I really like that. Um, my eyes are not quite, they're a little heavier than maybe I would do every day, I don't know, but I kind of did it in layers. Like I started off with a really natural look and then I kind of added to it so that you could maybe like get some ideas. But really love this look. I can't even say enough. If just Everything that I used is so good. I feel like it's, you're gonna be surprised. There's a lot of different things um, that I use. And what I would like to do is maybe do a video. Um, I think I'm gonna do it next or, or the video after that. I'm going to actually do a video where I use a heavier foundation, where I use, you know, all of these color correctors and all these different things, do a baking technique, do a really harsh, not harsh, but um, more intense contour with like darker products. And then we'll kind of compare and see like, okay, is there that big, you know, is the difference that big um, other than just, you know, you're wearing much less makeup and you feel more natural. So this is the way that I have been loving my makeup lately and I'm just so excited to share with you guys. I have just, this is such a killer comp. Well, first of all, the Arborium BB Cream. Oh my gosh, I'm going to go through all of this in the video, but... This is such a killer combo. The Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Highlight, you guys know this is like my love of life. But I had the poured Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Pearl. And I exchanged it for this one in the liquid because I wanted something, I have the Burberry one that is a little more natural. I wanted one that was like a whitish, like pearl highlight, like for real. And this is the liquid version of this. And Paired together, like this is not going anywhere, but it's light, it feels good, it just looks so pretty. This is really pretty and you can mix it with your foundation too and I'll kind of give you guys some tips. Um, cream blushes that I'm just obsessed with. I feel like there's just nothing on my skin, which is really a nice feeling when you're doing makeup, you know, obviously. Especially like for everyday, for everyday gals that are, that are, you know, wanting those effects and you wanna, but you may not want to, you know, you want to be confident when you go out. You don't want people to be thinking like, wow, she's wearing a lot of makeup. So, and I think what's going to surprise you a lot is that I'm using the Tartlet palette. I know, just take a moment. I have been very vocal about not really liking this and I got the second one. I gave away my old one. Like, I feel like the colors just kind of blend together all wrong and I just feel like it just turns into this big like bruisey look because there are a lot of mauve colors and... But when I really looked at it again, I ended up, I have another one, obviously, this is a new one. I gave it a second chance, because I was like, in theory, this is a pretty perfect palette. Like, the colors and stuff, there's pretty much everything in here. And I just am making it a point to apply it in different ways. I'm not using a lot of these mauves. Like, used to, I would go for these, like, on my actual lid, and that would end up, like, super mauve -y and I don't know. But I know a lot of you guys love it. I'm giving it a second chance, and so far, so good. So, um, I do kind of talk about some issues kind of with it throughout the video, but if you guys like this, hopefully you'll be excited to see me using that, because it's really not bad. I have been liking it. You can tell I'm still like, kind of like, ugh, like I hate to say that. If you guys want to see what I did, this is going to be a long video. We're just going to kind of go into it, and I'm just going to kind of explain everything, and hope that you guys enjoy the video. I forgot at the very end of everything, I can't believe I forgot to do this because this is like my main thing that I never forget unless I'm doing a video and then I always forget. The Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Spray. You guys have got, this is just the best, it's the best spray ever. And for a look like this, I'm not wearing really any powders. I kind of put a little right there like I showed you at the end, but, but regardless, no matter what, it's always good I think to use this. See, I barely, I, I just did like four, five, six. I can't stop using it, it's so good. But try this, it's very, very good. Just makes everything kind of just come together and um, really, really makes your makeup last a long time. Okay, so let's jump in. I hope y'all like it. So when I use the Herborian, I can never say that. I 
kind of use, I don't want to say like a lot, but, um, okay, and then I just blend it in. You really don't have to like work with it a crazy amount, it's just very like, it's very natural, I really like it. So it's already set. Uh, but not drying, if that makes sense. It's so good. I like to go ahead and do my brows. This is the Anastasia Brow Wiz, which the little spoolie broke off the end. So if you see me using the other one, I use the shade Taupe. You know, just for every day, I don't make them super bold or anything. This I just use to not so much fill in the middle because they're already dark enough. I just use it to soften the edges and make them look smooth and even. So filling brows isn't always about like making them darker. If you've already got dark ones, you know, don't be afraid of it. Just try to smooth or blend it out a little. Meaning that's kind of a fussy thing to do, but I just, it makes such a big difference and it can look really natural if you do it the right way. So I don't set my makeup. I don't really do any of that right away. I usually do my brows and then I go into my under eye concealer and I've tried so many different things but I just always come back to this Radiant Rose. This is actually like a highlighting product so it kind of does double for me so I don't have to use an eye concealer and a corrector and a this and a that. It's just literally one thing and then you can use it as this whole like highlight too. It looks like I'm applying a ton but it's really not. And I'll kind of go like that to get those veins on my, um, you know, on that thin part and then I put a little there. And hey, let's just put a little there. Let's go crazy. So I take my beauty blender and I, I like to, if I'm doing foundation, you have to use your beauty blender wet or else like what's the point? But I like to have it just, if I'm not, like I like to have a dry one just around to do stuff like this. Um, you could even use it wet for this, but it's not super necessary. But you see how that just already... You don't have to do all these like layering techniques. You don't have to apply like tons of powder on top of it to get that effect. It's just already like that. So they have this color. They also have one that's more yellow and then they have one that's more natural. So you can find one if you're a little darker than me. I think the pink is definitely the brightest if you're very fair. And the thing is, is they set. You do not need a powder with them. So I know I always, not cut corners, but I always kind of feel like I do things in a realistic way. Whereas those techniques are beautiful and stuff, you don't, you may not want to do it every day, but I am going to do a video using all of those. Then you can kind of see like, okay, can I tell the difference? Like what's going on? You can even apply a little more if you want, but I'm not, I'm just going to leave it. So next I go into, I'll go back to my face and do all, no, actually, no, I'm going to do that now. I'll go ahead and do this. So yeah, don't set your makeup or anything. Just go into this and I use the Bronze Universal by Chanel. And this F23 brush by Sigma. Yes, you can use a bronzer in an area where you would contour. You wouldn't like go crazy and like draw it on super dark or anything. But for me, I've used cooler tone contour things and they just don't look right on me. Like it looks way too harsh. I would rather do it like this and just do it really soft and then go back and add just a little in a darker color if I wanted to. But you know, this is what this product is for. It kind of warms up your whole face. So you would go around and kind of apply it in the areas where you would bronze make it a little darker in the areas where you would contour and um, just really get it blended in really well. To me it just looks, this looks so much flat, more flattering. You could have even done this before you did the step that I just did but I'm not really like, I don't go over that. You see how that's still very bright. I don't go really go over the area that I just did. So like I said, a little more in those areas uh, where you might want it to be a little darker. Really blend it at your hairline. It's just so great because it's not harsh. So then, um, I'll do my blush and stuff. I don't know why I always do that. It like always depends on what I do on my eyes, I guess. But I take this. This is the Creamy Beige by Maybelline. And if you can't find this particular one, you can use the Bad to the Bronze, which is similar. But I like this one because it doesn't have shimmer or anything like that. MAC makes a paint pot that's very similar to this. I forgot what it's called. I had it, but then I gave it away because it was so similar to this one. And... This one's just good. So I just put that on my lids. Now if you wanted, you could just use some mascara. You could use a little bit of liner and call it a day. And that's what I do a lot of times with this because it's just so easy. I put a little underneath too. You can use your fingers and stuff. But I like uh, these E25 brushes for creams. I always have. It's just 
so easy. Okay, now I'm gonna surprise you guys. I know some of you who know that I'm not a huge fan of the Tartlet. I never really was a huge fan of the Tartlet. I use this uh, Force of Nature, and I'm using this um, Chanel brush. I'll try to link to everything below, but this is pretty similar to the Paint Pot, and this just makes everything look really smooth. So I use that first, and then I take the brush sideways and just kind of get it that same color into the crease and just kind of blend it up and make it really soft. Fluffy Chanel brush though is good, it's the 25. You can really do a lot with it. Okay, and then, this one's so good too, it's the 19. I'm gonna take this color called Dreamer and put it right there. This is just a very like basic eyeshadow look for me. You see, you kind of do it right there in the outer part and then kind of bring it down in that outer corner. The colors will kind of blend together in a big old like mauve mess if you're not like careful, but I think it just all depends on how you use it. Maybe I'm just like making it a point to use it differently than I did before. I don't know. I might put a little bit of this dark brown like right there. And then I'm using this whitish cream. See, like I said, this, okay, this is why, too, I guess I was so frustrated because I think at the time I was used to using, like, the Lorac Pro and some other things, like my Vizart where you can, like, let me just show you. You can literally use this cream color in the Vizart, and it's just, like, I don't know if you can really tell, but it's, like, you can actually see it. The Tarte palette, all those light colors are just kind of chalky and nothing, so. But I still like the palette. I could still use it, um, but... I think I would just rather use this, but it doesn't have any of the purples and the plums that sometimes I like to use. But whatever. Next, what I do is I take this NARS Cold Liner, and this is in the color Menorch, and it's a very like fat mechanical liner. You're really not going to get a precise look with it, other than the very first time that you use it. It's like one of those. But I don't mind. I haven't really been doing a big wing lately. I just haven't really cared to do that. Um, but I just get it against my lash line, not super, you know, I'm not trying to make some pretty perfect line because we're actually going to smudge it out. So then do the other side. And um, this is the E30 by Sigma, but this is the synthetic version. And then I take my skinny liner by Ico because that kind of liner will never get close to your lashes. And I put it on its side and I literally just touch it right at the lash line. I'm not tracing over the whole line. So I do that to both sides. And I take this black color and an angled brush. You don't have to do this, but if you've got some extra time, you can just do this and go around. You don't, you know, it's not like you have to be super careful. And this will not budge, like if you're gonna be at work. It, it, but see, it's just perfect. Like it's not fussy looking. I either use one of two mascaras lately. The Sinuosity by Sigma, which I absolutely freaking love and the, or the Chanel, volume to Chanel. I'm like really piling this stuff on. So, you know, maybe I should have done this next part for, well no, because I always like to do this after my eyeshadow. So I got this one, which is more of a whitish pearl, which I thought would show up better, and it's just the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector. And I have this one, you can actually mix in with your foundation, you notice a huge difference. What I do is I put it on my hand, and I take my Beauty Blender, and it can be, Actually, I think a dry one honestly works better for this. And you can just kind of do it like that. And it's really pretty. You don't have to do this because the Laura Mercier is honestly the same effect, I feel. But what I like about this is if you are, like I said, going to be gone all day or you're going to be at work or... Um, like, this isn't crazy, too crazy for work. Like, it's actually really pretty because um, it looks so natural. Same with this powder. You can put it on just very lightly. And dab a little bit over where I put that um, the Mac right there and then when you layer this powder over it okay let's do that too it will last like freaking all day it lasts like two days if you didn't take it off but no you want to do that okay so yeah then I take that and this brush the F37 which is just the best brush for doing this by Sigma and when it layers it just it's just the same and it kind of locks it in and so perfect. This is, if there was one product I think of 2015, actually I think I used this in 2014 too though. 
this is it. Like, it's just the one product that I cannot live without. Like, I can replicate, I guess, like different other things, but I can never replicate this with anything else. But this was pretty similar, but it's a liquid, so it's totally different. But yeah, when you layer them, whoa, when you layer them, they're just very good. So the next, what I would do is I would do my lips. And I have been so in love with this. So in love with it that it's in my purse and I've gotta go get it. Namaste, and it's by Tarte. It's the Tardis Lip Paint. They have a whole line of lip paints now. This one is just the perfect one and because it's nude. And with these lip paints, it can be so hard in these lip paint lines like the Kat Von D or, um, gosh, what's the other one? The NYX, you know, the ones that I have of all those. And then what's the other one that I have? Oh, the Melted and stuff like that. Um, it's really, I want to branch out and try a bunch of other lines because I really do like this, but I don't want to go overboard because I feel like I have so many. I really want to try to use what I have, but they can either be too brown, they can be too nude, like the tart sugar, melted sugar, you, or the, um, gosh, the Too Faced melted sugar. You can't wear this really on its own, or at least I can't. It is very, very, like, white, but it's beautiful paired over other things. It's like a must-have for me for that reason, but it's really hard to find the perfect toned nude. That doesn't make you look sick, doesn't look like, wow, she just painted her lips nude and that looks weird, you know what I mean? It's just so perfect. So I used this liner and I didn't have a liner like this either, which really excited about this. It's called Boho. It's a very peachy, nude-ish color. And then, this is so good. So these are not going to, they're not glossy by any means. They're a lip paint, but they're not going to set, like, you know the Kat Von D really sets and it won't really transfer a lot. This one is more along the lines of like the Too Faced Melted and that you need to use it very thin because it will set more if you use it very thin. And you really don't need to pile it up because it's so pigmented, but it's not going to have that dry, like, mm, you know? Really freaking love this. This is something that I would repurchase over and over and over. I just love it, it's so, so good. So I've been wearing it a lot lately. I've been like carrying it in my purse and kind of just taking it with me and oh, I gotta do blush, I forgot. So what I've been doing for blush lately is I'm taking either one of two of these because the poppy is like, it works for me, but it's very like super bright. We'll use that today. And then this orange blossom is a really nice peach, which I would really recommend. I'm gonna use this one. You can definitely use your fingertips. It's not an oily, creamy blush. It's a very, like, good. It's, it's a very, um, like a clean feeling, creamy blush, if that makes sense. You can use it on your lips too, obviously. We don't, we're not gonna do that today. But if you take this, you can use it on your fingers and blend it. But I love using this. It's an F15 brush. It's just perfect. And um, so you get it on there, like super, super lightly, like that's probably gonna be too much. And just very lightly, just like with a little doo doo doo. You wanna just get it right there. So it's kind of insane, I think how, I gotta blend that a little more, but how like dewy and how natural this looks. Um, I don't think dewy always looks natural, but I'm just saying like, you have all the effects of like contour and highlighting and all that, but your face isn't like packed on with all these products, you know what I mean? What I would do, I would, pro I would probably apply this before, not that I'm layering this over the Laura Mercier, but I can already tell I'm gonna apply a little more Laura Mercier because if you really go nuts with this and you're really gonna blend it out, um, Laura Mercier and this powder is what, I'm, what I mean. You may need to like blend it out with a brush or something, you know what I mean? Like this, this, and you see I am kind of overlapping that now. And you don't want to wipe away any of that pretty Laura Mercier stuff. So what I would do is use your Becca, just no, 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 just use your Becca with your thing and just kind of do that. Use your cream products and then go back in last. And honestly, the Arborean, nah, that is so good that you don't have to, see when you do that, it just kind of blends them both together. You really don't have, I wouldn't do this twice, you know, just wait and do this very last. I should have known that. That's what I usually do, but you know. Um, the, okay, the Eborian, you don't have to set. You don't have to use a powder. You don't have to do anything like that. The only time, though, that I would ever use a powder is right here in this area where I do need more coverage 
where I might have some redness or just an area that might get a little more oily. Just this MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural. I use the shade Light, Light Plus. I'm getting so tongue-tied right now. It's the most natural powder. I've used it for years. You can just kind of dust it right there. And maybe on your forehead. I really do like this look. It's what I've been using the most lately and like I said in that favorites video, I really wanted to just show you what I've been doing lately. Like actually demo it and show you some of these little tricks and things that have been working for me. So I hope that y'all enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And the whole point too is that you kind of get the same effect as if you were to go nuts and like really do a lot of things, which I will do next and then we can compare. I will let you guys go. I hope that y'all enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll link to everything below if you want to find any of the specific products that I'm using. And I will talk to you all very, very soon. Bye.